Hi guys, welcome to another video. As you saw in last week's trailer to the upcoming two videos, we're gonna do a part one, part two, maybe even a part three. So today is our first day. We're launching very good conditions. The beach itself was very sanded up and uh, hence I was a bit intimidated to take my wife's new car too deep into the water. As you can see, quite a lot of sandbanks and uh, but the conditions were very calm so our push-in was a bit difficult but once we got going all was good once we got out we saw a lot of bait activity this is the middle of our sardine season and we actually tried to catch a few to see what there was in the water and we actually caught a red eye sardine it's not the famous natal sardine which everybody knows of during our sardine run but there was so much activity a lot of birds diving and different species of dolphin all over the place. The commons were extremely spread out and very active jumping around the boat. So we headed out onto the reef. Dylan's first dive down, murky water, swim straight into a shark. We think it was a bronze whaler or sometimes people call them copper sharks. So Dylan's next dive with our soon to be launched three band gun. The specific one was a 90 Timberline with an eight mil spear. We're just balancing different sizes of buoyancy for the timber to be able to compensate and dampen the recoil on heavier spears. This is our first prototype he's testing. So he used it on a smaller fish, a bank Stiembros. As you can see a few weeks ago, we discussed line fitment to the spear, the two options, either right at the back or further ahead of the notches or onto a shark fin. This one was onto the shark fin and as you can see the problems with it, it often can jam up on the reef. This is a classic negative of the line attached further forward. My spear is stuck on the bottom with a banky on it. I'll get it now. Dylan had to leave the fish on the bottom, come back to the surface, went down the second time. Luckily, there wasn't a strong current, but the fish itself was able to tear itself quite badly because that shark was now jammed on the bottom. He couldn't carry the spear with it. No problem, everything was retrieved. So, after shooting a few small fish, at least we had supper, we decided to head to one of our most pristine places. Literally, we're diving up against the cliffs. It has to be very calm and uh, sand washed away. The conditions change a lot in this area and these big caves up against the cliff. So we traveled a long way to have a look at the conditions, getting there and finding them not so good. But what a beautiful place to see. This just shows you how undoubtable the area was. There can be quite a surge into these caves and uh, the water can go through and out the back they're right up against the cliffs and you can get dragged into these caves and you've got to wait a while to come back out again. Not a very comfortable place to dive, hence uh, the aborted dives. Yeah, it looks horrible. <laughs> Yeah, guys, we just got back in time, a big downpour. Might have got wet after a day's diving. The first day was a long day. We traveled a long way to get in. Everybody was tired. Woke up in the morning on the second day to a lot of rain and decided to do a crayfish dive at low tide. So the guys swam in, saw a few, caught a few. Being in the shallows, there's quite a lot of uh, crayfish diving in the area. So there's not that much around as you can see what the guys got.
By the afternoon, the weather was a lot better and the guys decided not to take the boat. Let's go and do a shore dive. Yeah, you can see Jeremy using our Velcro fin guards. These are super adjustable, being Velcro, you can tweak it to whatever tension you want and very suitable for swimming off the shore. Once you get out to sea, if it's too tight, you can slack it off. But to keep your fins on in big surf conditions, this is the perfect fin guard. If you want to know more about these fin guards, we have done a previous video on them. Follow the link. When entering the water on a shore dive, especially if there's big surges, it's a good idea to walk backwards. That force of water coming up the beach can fold your fins over very badly and stress them way beyond what they should be stressed. It's always a good idea to go in reverse, but on a steep beach, you may have a reverse flush back. Immediately pivot around if that's necessary to make sure, again, it doesn't bend the fins over. So yeah, you can see Dylan prepping to get in. Unfortunately, one of the do not do's is leave your gun on the sand when a wave washes up and down. It can fill the cassette with fine grit, which can affect the way the mechanism works. Not a good idea to leave it on the ground. The float line you see behind him, he has shortened it by wrapping up two hanks. We do have a video showing how to do this. It's a very good idea to keep your float line short while swimming out. If you have a lot of line around and you're swimming between the rocks, this can easily get tangled up. You'll now have to return back to the beach to try and undo all the rope. Once you're out, you can undo one or both hanks. Very easy to do and adjust your line accordingly so that you can dive the appropriate depth. It's a good idea to keep those lines not too long, especially if you're diving right on back line. Your float can get, still get stuck on the rocks by being pushed inshore by the waves. So in this trip, Jeremy and Dylan were both using short guns purely because the visibility was so poor as you can see. And here he's testing our Timberline roller and taking one of his favorite fish, our bronze bream. On that previous dive, Jeremy had seen the Natal knife jaw, or we call them cuckoo bass, and called Dylan over to take a shot. Dylan! Dylan! There's a cuckoo bass here. As you can see, first option, safety on. Not a good idea not to check your gun once you're out and ready to fire. Once he sorted it out, no problem taking the fish. Although again, way too much gun for that size fish. You can actually hear the eight mil shaft hit the reef. If you're diving very shallow, once you've shot your fish, be aware of where you are. Don't concentrate on the fish and get washed back onto the rocks. You need to be able to get out the area into a safe zone. As you can see, this is what happened with Dylan. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Jeremy was lucky to find a GT, or we call them giant trevally, kingfish in the shallows, not a big one. This size is a much better eating. So there you have day one and day two in the part one. 
Next week, we'll put up part two of day three. I hope you enjoyed that. Stand by for the next one.